Warm greetings to all the viewers and welcome to this brief tutorial where we're going to be covering colidocal cysts. A little bit about colidocal cysts before we get into the specifics of the different lesions that we can see. Remember that these represent a congenital cystic dilatation of the bile ducts. They can involve the intrahepatic bile ducts and or the extrahepatic bile ducts as we'll see depending on the type of colidocal cyst that you encounter in your patient. The etiology is unclear. It's thought that this could reflect a congenital ductal plate malformation and or there may be some association with these lesions in the presence of an anomalous pancreatic capillary junction, typically when it's more than 15 millimeters in length. So if you look at the union of the distal common bile duct and the pancreatic duct, usually they join for a short segment before entering the duodenum. If that length is more than 15 millimeters, it's thought that they can predispose patients to developing colonocal cysts. We typically see these in infants and in childhood, so a disease that is often encountered early and more often seen in female patients and of those of Asian descent. There are a few important complications that you need to remember when you see patients with colonocal cysts. Because of the bile stasis, you're predisposed to forming stones and can be predisposed to having infections such as cholangitis. One of the more important complications, of course, is that they are at risk for developing cholangiocarcinoma. So it is for this reason that they should be evaluated and potentially treated. And the treatment options will vary depending on the type of colidocal cyst that is present, but generally will require some sort of surgical resection. And if they're too numerous to perform a simple surgical resection, transplant uh, may be necessary. So we generally qualify or uh, classify colidocal cysts according to the Tadani classification, in which there are five major types. The first type, or type 1, involves the extrahepatic biliary tree, and there are certain subtypes that you can encounter within type 1, which we'll go through. Type 1a involves cystic dilatation of the entire extrahepatic biliary tree, as can be seen over here in this drawing schematic. Type 1b, on the other hand, is a more focal cystic dilatation seen involving the extrahepatic biliary tree. So it's not as extensive as can be seen in type 1a. And finally, type 1c is when you have a more fusiform shape uh, associated with the extrahepatic biliary ductal dilatation. So it more you know, has sort of a fusiform or spindle shape as opposed to a very cystic uh, shape that can be seen with type 1a and type 1b. Now, while all these uh, colidocal cysts are very, very uncommon, of these, type 1 in general is the most common of these lesions that you'll encounter. The next type of colidocal cysts are, are known as type 2 colidocal cysts, and these really represent true diverticula associated with the uh, superduodenal portion of the extrahepatic biliary tree. Very rare. We really, really don't see a lot of case of this, uh, you know, several case reports at best. But uh, when present, they'll look like a little outpouching associated with the extrahepatic biliary tree, as can be seen in this diagram. The next type is a type 3 colidocal cyst. This is also known as a colidocal seal. And this really represents a focal dilatation involving the intraduodenal segment of the extrahepatic biliary tree. So if you follow the distalmost portion of the common bile duct, as it sort of enters the duodenum, right over there, you'll see a focal cystic dilatation, um, and that's going to be known as a type 3 colidocal cyst. Move on to type 4 colidocal cysts, of which, again, there are two subcategories that you need to know about. In both, you'll see multiple cysts. Type 4a, you're going to see multiple cysts that involve the intra- and extrahepatic bile ducts, as can be seen in this drawing over here. Well, in type 4b, you're going to see multiple cysts, but these cysts will just involve the extrahepatic biliary tree with no intrahepatic ductal dilatation. So as opposed to type 1 colidocal cysts, these will be multiple discrete cysts as opposed to type 1, which is more a cystic or fusiform dilatation of the extrahepatic biliary tree. And you can see an example of that on this drawing over here, type 4b colidocal cyst. And finally, we have the type 5 colidocal cyst in the Todani classification. This is also known as Corolli's disease. And in this instance, you're going to see multiple regions of saccular or cystic dilatation 
involving the intrahepatic bile ducts. It can be diffusely involving the ducts, involving a certain segment or a certain hepatic lobe. And here you can see some examples of what that would look like on imaging. And if you were to look at these in cross-section, you may on occasion see a cystic mass with a central dot in the middle, and that's known as the central dot sign, where you have the portal radical at the middle of this region of saccular dilatation. You can see that in all imaging modalities when you look at these cysts in cross-section. Some of the associations that uh, are important to remember with Caroli's disease is that it can certainly cause um, some uh, renal manifestations as well. It's uh, associated with Caroli's disease, including autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, medullary sponge kidney, and medullary cystic disease of the kidney as well. Sometimes it can be associated with liver fibrosis and portal hypertension, in which case it's known as Caroli syndrome. Thank you so much for your attention.